friends welcome to today's lecture today our topic is transport and welfare of food animals part 1 the part 1 is for undergraduates and also for postgraduate students and one more details i will do on the same topic as part 2 that will be exclusively for the pg students as we have already discussed about the abattoir different aspects like design layout operations and management including poultry processing plant in four different lecture now we need to understand and learn about the transport and welfare of food animals which is very very important for proper quality and quantity of meat and proper care as per rule for the animals and that also helps in proper quality of meat earlier i have discussed about the brief flow of operation in the process of animal to meat so animals are brought from the farm by transportation then it is taken in the abattoir kept either in holding or in layerage and then only it goes for slaughter so in this chain of operation between farm and abattoir transportation is a very very important because it is most stressful and injurious stage the animal undergoes a very stressful situation and very susceptible to different kind of injuries further it contributes significantly to poor animal welfare so most of the countries including india there are certain rules and regulations to be followed for the care of the animals and that is what is animal welfare which is very very important and the transportation also causes loss of production by quantity or by quality of meat importance of transport as i have already said previously so one of the important aspect is animal welfare without fulfilling the requirements for proper animal welfare a sustainable trade of meat or a better running is not possible so i am going to talk more details at the latter part of this lecture and further details in part 2 of this lecture further transportation is having economic importance as i said it leads to loss potential loss in terms of quantity of meat or in quality of meat due to the death or injuries because transportation can cause death and injuries which we are going to see later it can cause dehydration and weight loss and meat quantity loss it can cause many disease and otherwise it also causes meat quality loss due to the different conditions which we are going to see later here we will see the overview of transportation that is the different aspect we are going to discuss firstly general guidelines so there are certain basic guidelines which should be followed for proper transportation of animal and also to fulfill the requirements as per law or regulations then we will know about the mode of transportation that is what are the different methods available what is their pros and cons when it should be used that is the next factors affecting the mode of transportation that is on what basis we should select which mode of transportation should be used then we will see about the effect of transportation on meat animals so how it is going to affect the meat animals and the last we are going to see about the effect of transportation on meat quality so these are the major aspect we are going to see in the first part of this lecture and the second part of course on the welfare aspect now we will see the stages of transport we can see two stage first stage and second stage in the first stage there is pre transport handling here we need to do the herding of the animals or collecting the animals then grouping and then we have to withhold the food and water then there is loading that is loading into the transport vehicle whatever may be the vehicle so there again comes handling for which different kind of facilities are required and different kind of human stockmanship is required 
and also the type of vehicle is very important in this case. Here is the stage 2 or second stage of transportation. Here comes the mode of transport. As per the mode, there is a transit for the animals and that has a connection with the distance and duration and according to the duration, we need to take care of the animals. Here comes the type of vehicles and the skill of the driver which plays very important role for proper care of the animals and proper transport and the road also an important factor. Then after it reaches the destination or to the abattoir, there is a unloading and there comes again the handling of animals, proper unloading, proper facility for unloading and then proper identification and then it goes to the holding pen or to the layerage. So this is the second stage of the transportation. All these things we are going to discuss next. Here we will see the general guidelines as per Indian standard 4157. This is a BIS standard which prescribes the general guidelines to be followed for transportation of animals irrespective of mode of transportation. There are so many important points but few of them I am going to discuss here. That is number one is good ventilation and lighting. While transportation there should be proper ventilation and proper light so that animals will not suffer from any physiological stress. Then next is good ramp facility. This is important both for loading and unloading, loading in the farm area or production center and when it reaches the abattoir there need to be unloaded. So ramp is very important and the height should match with the height of the truck or other vehicle. Avoid exposure to extreme weather. So this indicates that the vehicle should have proper protection. So if it is a truck there should be overhead cover for avoiding the extreme heat or extreme cold. Next is careful loading and unloading. So this is about handling. The animal should not be unnecessary made panic or too much of cruel handling should be avoided. Next is only healthy animals are allowed. So for transportation only the healthy animals are allowed for, for taking to a distant place. Next, separation of animals during transport. So in a vehicle which is large enough and there could be many animals, the animals should be separated with separator with proper height. Avoid overcrowding and noise. So the proper space should be available. There is a specification for space for different species of animal I am going to tell in the second lecture. And too much of noise also is a disturbing and make the animal panic so we should avoid. Then there should be clean water and sometimes the feed also should be available when the distance is too long or duration is too long. And next is frequent veterinary inspection. So at least in between 4-5 hours there should be veterinary inspection. Mode of transportation. So there are different mods available of which only three we are going to discuss here for food animal transportation. The one is on hoop that is on road by walking we can take the animals to a short distance. The second is on road that is by trucks or lorries can be used for transporting different kind of food animals when the number is not too much and when the distance is also not too much. And the third option is on rail that is the railway has got specific wagon for animal transport when the distance is too long and the number of animals are too high then this is ideal. Further ways for transportation is like seaway or through ship or through airway by aeroplane but those are used mainly for transporting the animals for breeding purpose or for the very valuable animals. Those are not suitable for transportation of food animals. Factors deciding mode of transportation. Partly I have already explained this in the previous slide that is first is the distance. When the distance is very less maybe up to 10 kilometer then animals can be taken by walking. When the distance is little more than that up to 100, 200, 500 kilometer then it can be by truck. 
whereas if it is too long it should be by railway then the facilities depending on the availability if there is no facility for uh, railway then definitely we have to go by track or when there is no facility for track or the number is very less like number of animals as it is there in the last so when the number is very less then we can go for walking or we can go by track or when the number is not very large we cannot use the railway even then the distance is too large and finally the cost also we have to keep in mind for selecting the proper mode of transportation for animals now the first method of transportation is driving on hoop or by walking this is a very suitable and natural method for transporting the animals and on the way animals can be grazing on the grass or shrubs and also there will be water bodies on the way from which it can drink the water so it will not have any stress or weight loss and the ideal distance for this is about 8 to 10 km which may take a traveling time of 4 to 5 hours so this is most natural and convenient and there is no adverse effect on the animal health or on the meat quality and this kind of walking should be taken in the early morning in summer the places where the summer is very hot then the animals should be taken at early morning by 4 o'clock 5 o'clock like that and if the winter is very severe in that case the journey should start late morning maybe after 10 or 11 o'clock and they can reach by 3 or 4 o'clock before again it becomes cold so this is a very suitable method for small numbers and for a small distance now road transport the second method of transportation of animals here the distance can be up to 500 km and which may take 12 to 15 hours of journey here the animal handlers plays very important role they should have human handling and efficient transport practices depends on their sensitivity this mod allows loading and unloading at appropriate places so wherever required the trucks can be stopped animals can be unloaded they can be given feed and water or rest or some walking and again they can start we must avoid the jerks or sudden stops during this transport by trucks or lorries and whenever there is a turning it should be done with a slowly and gently so that animals find it very difficult during turning to keep their balance they may fall one over the other and the attendant must be there in vehicle to check the animals and animals should be offered adequate feed and water when the length of journey is more than 4 to 6 hours so every 4 to 6 hours vehicle should be stopped and feed and water should be given here are few points about the design of the truck the floor should be non slippery and the sides should be smooth there should not be any sharp objects which can cause injuries to the animal and there should be sufficient height to the side walls temporary or permanent overhead covering should be there to protect the animal from sun or rain or if it is very cold adequate ventilation must be there proper partition between different sized or species of animal so that they get proper protection and other care has to be taken during the journey transportation by rail this is an ideal method for large number of animals and the distance is very long so when the distance is more than 500 km this is ideal animals should be provided ad libitum water and feed on the way of journey whenever the time comes it should consist of non slippery floor indian railway provides the wagon for specifically transporting the animals uh, should have proper bedding material should have animal attendants but no fire should be used within the wagon which badly frighten the animals and unloading of the animals should be done when it is more than 1000 km and that time feed and water and exercise can be given and then the animals can be loaded again 
here briefly we will discuss about the transportation of poultry in case of poultry it should be generally done with the help of trucks with proper cage arrangement the bird should be examined and certified as free from disease and fit for journey it should be done by a qualified veterinarian only poultry in the same container shall be of same species that is different species should not be mixed in the same vehicle like uh, uh, chicken or duck or turkey or guinea fowl so different species should not be mixed as far as possible overcrowding should be avoided and before starting the journey they should be given feed and water before we start the transportation or loading here are few more points on transportation of poultry the container shall be properly cleaned and sterilized before the poultry is placed in them male stock shall not be transported along with the female stock in the same container so that the stress or fighting can be avoided during hot weather water should be ensured every 6 hours for the poultry birds and proper arrangement should be there for feeding and watering during the transportation these are briefly few points about the transportation of poultry so far we have discussed about the briefly different aspect of transportation of food animals now we will see the effect of transportation on the animals poor transportation may result in following conditions in food animals number 1 is loss of weight or shrinkage we call it that is mainly due to the journey effect or due to dehydration or improper care or due to the uh, effect of the climate and urination defecation etc then it leads to stress and fatigue journey itself is a huge stress due to adverse situation or adverse climate and animal get fatigue all this thing we are going to discuss again later and there could be bruises injuries or broken bones this can be due to the fighting of animals or cruel handling or inhuman handling may lead to injuries or due to fighting or due to improper vehicles and there could be broken legs or bones etc and there can be sometime death that may be due to sometime infection or dehydration or heat shock or so many other reasons few of them we are going to discuss again later loss of weight or shrinkage as i said this is one of the most common effect of transportation on the animals this weight loss is mainly due to dehydration and depletion of muscle glycogen and this loss could be 3 to 10% depending upon the duration of transport and other climatic conditions and care taken so 10% here means from 100 kg live weight it may lose 10 kg then another most important effect is stress and fatigue so because of the continuous stress animal may have the infection leading to sipping fever or transit tetany sipping fever is caused by pasturella maltosida which requires proper treatment so these infections are possible mainly due to the stress which leads to the lowering of resistance and immunity and these infection can come up so these conditions affect the quality of meat these infections otherwise there is a loss of quantity of meat due to the weight loss or shrinkage effects on meat quality that is the effect of transportation on the meat quality as i said earlier stress and fatigue play important role in quality of meat they usually lowers the quality of meat due to depletion of muscle glycogen so most common are the two that is dfd dark farm and dry meat and the another one is pale soft exudative this two are very common and sometime another one is sticky textured meat so we are going to discuss more details about these three in the latter part now briefly we will discuss about the dfd and pac actually we will learn more details about this in the meat science in unit 4 so dfd mostly happens in case of beef so sometime it is also called as dark cutting beef 
This happens due to low acid production. The ultimate pH of the muscle remains high, causing a condition called dark cutting meat or dark farm dry. So when the animal are in some amount of or low amount of stress for a long period, so slowly the glycogen reserve get exhausted due to the mild stress for a long time. So when the animal is slaughtered, there is no glycogen reserve in the muscle. Therefore, there is no anaerobic glycolysis and the pH will not fall down as desired. So the ultimate pH is high and that leads to this condition. This affects keeping quality of meat and the meat becomes dark, which is unusually tender on cooking due to more water content. We will discuss more details about it as I said in the unit 4. Similarly, the pale soft exuditive. This is more common in case of pig and this happens due to a reverse situation when the animal is under severe stress just before slaughter. So that leads to sudden use of glycogen or glycogen reserve get exhausted suddenly and at that time if we slaughter there will be a very quick fall of pH and that leads to a condition like pale soft exudative. And this kind of pork will have higher drip because it will have less water holding capacity due to the lower pH and the cooking loss will be more. So both these kind of meat are undesirable. We will discuss more later. Pre-slaughter care, either in the layerage or in the holding pen. So here we will discuss briefly few points to avoid the undesirable effect on the meat quality. The first one is allow animals to settle down. So we must give sufficient time and condition for the animal to relax and settle down. Secondly, don't mix animals from different farms or from different transport groups while we are putting them in the holding pens. Next is provide adequate space to allow animals to move and access to water. So animals should have sufficient space and access to water. Provide protection against extreme heat, cold and inclement weather. So these conditions will induce heavy stress leading to the impact on meat quality. And finally, keep the noise levels at minimum. So noise is a good stress for the animal and it will excite the animal leading to the stress and the effect on meat quality. Pre-slaughter handling and care in continuation to the previous one. So the resting time depends on duration of journey, condition of the animal, age and sex. This is the resting period in the layer age I am talking about. Undue holding is also not advisable. If there is no proper reason, unnecessarily animals should not be kept in the holding and that may lead to stress. Lairage should be well equipped with proper drainage facility. So lairage construction, we have already discussed earlier about it. Feed should not be given in last 12 to 18 hours before slaughter. This is a typical practice for the animals to be slaughtered in the layerage, this I have discussed in the unit 4 also. Ample water should be given during this period and that has got a lot of benefit. So by withdrawing the feed and by giving ad libitum water, it has got a lot of benefit like it will flush out the GI tract and reduce the bacterial load. That helps in reducing the contamination by chance if there is a puncture in the GI tract. And it also helps in removal of the height. Because of the better hydration of the body, the attachment of the skin will be less and it is more easy to remove. And further, it also helps in stunning by electrical method because when the hydration is more, the conductivity of the electricity will be better and it is more efficient. Here I will discuss few points about handling of pigs very quickly. It is best to move small groups of pigs than single pigs. Large groups are more difficult to direct than several small groups. Move pigs in a slow, steady and calm manner. Use paddles and panels rather than using electric prods. Allow pigs 
appropriate time to settle and ensure there is only one way. Pigs will explore lighting, smells, surfaces, sounds and other animals. So we must give suitable opportunity for that. Some genotypes of pigs tend to be more fearful of humans than others. So some genotypes are more susceptible also to stress. So we have to keep all these points in mind for handling the pigs before slaughter or during transportation. Care in race and in stunning area. Race means that is the connection from layer edge to slaughter hall. So through which the animal reaches the stunning area. So some of the important points very briefly. The races to have solid fences to prevent animals from seeing people and other distractions. So animals background in the layer edge should not see the other animal being slaughtered. Minimum stress to the animals while restraining. When we are restraining the animal, it should not have too much stress. Provide light to animals entering into the stunning box. There should be appropriate light in the passage. And stunning box design should be appropriate for different species of animals. And electrical stunning box should be made or covered with non-conducting materials. So these are some of the brief points about the care to be taken in the race and in the stunning area for the animals before slaughter. Now we are at the second part of this lecture that is food animal welfare. Though in the first part I have already touched many aspects when we are talking about the transportation and the effect of transportation the few aspects of animal welfare is touched but here specifically certain things I need to discuss relevant to the food animal welfare. The animal welfare is of prime importance in the production, marketing and harvesting of food animals because nowadays there are a lot of stringent rules and regulations and large amount of animal rights activists or animal welfare activists who wants that animals should be treated properly and no amount of cruelty will be allowed. So for the sustainability of the meat industry and sustainability of the meat trade, the animal welfare is extremely important and particularly now the Indian meat is becoming very popular in many countries. So for them one of the primary requirement is animal welfare. Further it also helps animal welfare also helps in proper meat hygiene, quality control, consumer satisfaction and to satisfy the animal welfare activists and also it gives a better image about the meat sector. So we are going to discuss few aspects related to this. Transportation and animal welfare as at the beginning of this lecture I have told in, in the process of bringing the animal to the slaughterhouse and getting the meat the transportation is most crucial and this transportation has got the major impact on the animal creating most stressful and injurious stage which we have touched earlier also and it also contributes significantly to poor animal welfare. Therefore proper animal welfare means the major portion is the transportation of the animal. Some of those things we are going to discuss. Before we go to the details of animal welfare, briefly we should talk about the animal behavior that is very important for handling of animals. So animals has got a flight zone and point of balance. So this is indicated by the large circle and animals flight zone is the animal safety zone and handlers should work on the edge of the flight zone. If an animal turns and faces a person, the person is outside the flight zone. When a person enters the flight zone, an animal will turn away. So here you can see the spot where a handler should stand for the movement of the animal. And if the handler position is to stop, then he should stand in the other place. Similarly, backside you can see a shaded area which is a blind spot where the handler is there, it doesn't make any effect. This is another diagram showing how to make the animals move forward. So if we want the animal to move forward, the handler need to move backward and his position should be beyond that dotted line which is called as 
point of balance. So cattle will move forward when the handler passes the point of balance at the shoulder of each animal. The handler walks in the opposite direction alongside the single file race. Here we will discuss some of the animal behavior in connection with welfare indicators. So when the situation is not conducive, the animal behavior will be different. So animal behavior as a measure of welfare. So behavior indicates the condition of animal welfare. Resistance to move during loading and unloading. That resistance shows the improper welfare condition. It also reflects specific physiological dysfunctions. As we all know the fight or flight mechanism, that is whenever there is an adverse condition, naturally there is a reflex either to fight or flight. That's a sympathetic nervous system reaction. Similarly, it is also called as general adaptation syndrome. In modern physiology, it is called as general adaptation syndrome that is controlled by the hypothalamus, pituitary and adrenal response. There are other indirect measurement for the welfare indication or the animal behavior that is indirect measurement of TRP rate that is the temperature, respiration and pulse rate that is an indicator of the welfare condition. Similarly, there are certain direct measure like some enzymes some hormones in the blood like adrenaline hormone we can measure which will increase during the stressful situation in uh, blood, urine, saliva or in meat juice. Some of those hormones are like cortisol hormones or we can measure the glucose. When the stress comes the adrenaline hormone will be re released and the glucose level will increase due to more glycolysis or we can see more lactate or we can see some of the enzymes like creatine kinase, lactate dehydrogenase and we can check the pH or we can see the THI that is temperature humidity index. Concept of animal welfare. So the animal welfare is guided by five freedom that all animals should have. It is recommended by Farm Animal Welfare Conference in 1992. So the number one is physiological freedom that is absence of hunger, thirst and malnutrition. Number two is environmental freedom that is adequate housing and physical comfort. It should be protected from the environmental conditions. Number three is health freedom that is absence of disease or injury or proper health support or medical support or treatment. Number four is behavioral freedom that is expression of specific behavior. It should have the freedom to move, walk or other reproductive uh, behavior. And number five is psychological freedom. That is, it should be free from any fear, anxiety or pain. So when we fulfill this five freedom, then only we can say that animal welfare is taken care of. This is another way of explaining the animal welfare requirement that is number one good feeding means animals should not suffer from prolonged hunger animals should not suffer from prolonged thirst number two is good housing means animals should have comfort around resting animals should have enough space to allow ease of movement animals should have thermal comfort number three good health means animals should be free of physical injuries Animals should be free of disease. Animals should not suffer pain caused by procedures. And number four, appropriate behavior. That includes animals should have a positive emotional state and negative emotions should be avoided as far as possible. Animals should be able to express normal social behaviors. Animals should be able to express species typical behaviors and promotion of good human animal relationships. Prevalent situation related to animal welfare. Here we will see some of the uh, situations which are not very conducive or not as per the requirement, but it is not always true. Handling of animals before and during transport is generally cruel, not properly handled and very badly forced to loading or unloading and that kind of 
handling is very very cruel secondly housing and holding of animal is primitive without proper shed and animals are tethered short so this is again a common practice most of the time animals are tied with this very short length and they are not given proper shed or protection but in many of the modern abattoirs all these situations are far better and there is not such complaint and finally animals are treated as a commodity rather than a living being so many times animals are taken as a commodity without proper care without proper uh, requirements are fulfilled and that is most of the time is very very uh, unexpected and unsatisfactory which need to be improved by proper education of the farmers and handlers and other trade industry people so scope for improvement or how to improve these situations and how to improve the animal welfare because it is extremely important for indian meat industry and for better acceptability of indian meat in the foreign market or foreign countries so for this guidelines should be prepared which shall provide requirements and procedures in different aspects like managing animal health and welfare so proper guidelines should be prepared and people should be educated rearing of animals in this area proper guidelines should be made and about the handling of animals proper guideline and education should be given and in the transportation and penning of animals proper care should be taken recent transport rules and policy in india this is a new development but i am going to discuss very briefly and details of it i will discuss in the second lecture that is the part 2 of transportation and welfare of food animals the government of india has accepted the rules for transportation of livestock as per bis that is is 14904 2007 and this has been accepted in 2014 this code in general was intended as guide an educational tool in promoting animal transportation and welfare practices in the country but now this is accepted by government so till now this code was voluntary and after the union government's approval it becomes mandatory so now the guidelines and rules given in this standard becomes mandatory and details of it i will discuss in the second lecture of this topic now we are at the end of this lecture today so we have first discussed about the transportation and different kind of requirements and different methods of transportation and what are the details requirement for each method some of the general guidelines and then we have discussed about the effect of transportation on meat animals and effect of transportation on meat quality then we have discussed some of the pre slaughter care to be taken before the, the the slaughter or before transportation or after transportation just before slaughter and then we have discussed about the animal welfare aspect what are the concept of animal welfare what are the requirements to be fulfilled what is the present scenario and what is the latest new rules briefly i have mentioned for the details we will discuss in the part 2 of this lecture please study on the lecture note given and also from this book already i have given you the soft copy for textbook of abattoir practices and by products and wool thank you